How's it going everybody? My name is Mulder and welcome back to the Game Cron. Today we're looking at Dungeons and Dragons Dark Alliance unlocks and upgrades worth having. I'll be going over quickly what type of recipe upgrades along with the fact of what type of feats you should be having for your character in order to take on the harder challenges later on in the game. All that and more straight ahead. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for a lot more. So to start things off, let's talk about upgrades and unlocks for your potions. Now the only way for you to upgrade these potions is back at your main hub at the merchant. When speaking to the merchant, simply go over to your upgrade usables and there you're going to want to upgrade both your health potion, stamina potion, potion for heroism, elixir of cleansing, and elixir of resistance. Let's first talk about the health potion. Now for obvious reasons, the health potion you're going to want to get it between level 4 to max level. You're going to need this health potion especially when you're going solo. If you've gotten a chance to watch any of my live streams, which I hope you will, or take a look after I've posted them, you'll notice that there are times where the enemies can actually one-shot you in the back. Or during really dangerous boss battle encounters, say for example when it's 3 against 1, you're going to want to get those health potions to get you back up to max health right away in the midst of these fights. You're going to need around a 30,000 gold in order to get your health potion to at least level 4. The next potion you're going to want to focus on is stamina potion, which the same with the health potion, you're going to get to between level 4 to max level. Almost just as important as the health potion, your stamina is going to be drained faster in the harder challenges. Not only can enemies take more damage, but they can also stun you zapping your stamina as well. Having your stamina potion at the same level as your health potion, you're going to last a lot longer in the fight, especially when you're going solo. But now let's talk about one potion that you should get at max as soon as you can, which is the potion of heroism. Now this potion, depending upon how much heroism power you have left in your character before you drink it, can get you all the way up to allowing you to use your special attack. This potion can come in clutch in the midst of a fight that you're surrounded by multiple enemies or dealing with a difficult boss. This has definitely saved my butt and also my teammates whenever we're surrounded by multiple foes. Now the next two potions we're going to talk about are up to you to decide if you need them. I like these two potions because they've come in handy for me when I'm playing solo and with my main character, Dritz. The first one is called Elixir of Cleansing, which takes away any debuffs that are on your character and gives you a quick boost in speed. This is great whenever your character is poisoned, has any type of stun effects, or a certain spell that's been cast onto you by a mage. The next one we're going to talk about is the Elixir of Resistance, which will actually lower the amount of physical damage done to your character. Again, another great potion to have when you're outnumbered and going solo or playing with a group of friends on the higher challenge difficulties. Both these elixirs I recommend you get between level 3 to level level 4. Another thing to bear in mind is spread out your gold. You don't need to get all of these potions at the max levels right away like I've mentioned. The sooner the better of course, but if you're trying to spread out your gold and you're first starting out in this game, get your health, stamina, and heroism potions to at least level 2 each. If you're playing on the lower challenge difficulties first, you don't need the elixir of cleansing or the elixir of resistance just yet. Focus on your health, stamina, and heroism first. Now let's talk about feats. Now some feats can be different for all characters, but the ones I'm going to name off are actually all available for your characters at different points of the feats. The first feat you want to get is the one that allows you to get max health once you're revived. Depending upon the challenge difficulty you're playing on, nothing sucks more than if a teammate rushes in to save you, you're res, and the enemy just one-shots you again, because your health when you got back to life was too low. The next feat you want to focus on is increase your overall stamina max. Pretty self-explanatory, but you're going to need your stamina as high as you can in the later challenges. The next feat will focus on the cooldown reduction for your special attacks. This will allow you to use your special abilities more often. And then finally, the last feat is to focus on your critical hit damage. Getting any type of feats that increase your critical hit damage while also focusing on getting max stamina will allow you to cruise through these challenges not only easier, but also solo. But if you're running with a group, you'll be able to cut your way through like a tank. These upgrades and unlocks have been saving my butt as I've been playing this game both by myself and with my friends. And that's it for our quick look at Dungeons & Dragons Dark Alliance unlocks and upgrades worth having. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for a lot more. I got some more video content planned and a few more live streams ready for this game, so be sure to stick around. The next live stream I'll be doing for this game will be on Saturday, so don't forget to click that little bell icon to remind yourself to jump into the stream. I'll also be doing more video content and live streams on up and coming RPGs later on as the year goes. But until the next live stream and video drops, my name is Mulder, and I'll see you next time in the Game Cron. 